Well, I think, first of all, it's quite interesting to see how the CNY actually behaves. They've actually weakened. I think some, obviously, market participants were thinking, OK, if you don't have that counter-cyclical factor in place, some kind of a safety net has been removed, and you're probably going to see a little bit more volatility in the currency. And that would obviously mean that uh, the carry that we have, which is quite attractive, is less valued. But I think from our perspective, it really tells you that probably the currency is going to move more driven by macro and market conditions. And as the stars are really lining up for a stronger CNY from a growth perspective, from a bounce payment perspective, also from an inflow perspective on the portfolio side, I think it really points that the, the CNY is likely to trade on the stronger side, looking at 6.6 uh, in the near term and really an attractive story to hold, particularly for investors in the developed world, which are struggling, given there's absolutely no yield to chase. Yes, that is true. I mean, you're also pointing to some divergent economic factors, too, that we have between the U.S. and what is going on with China's continued recovery. So you're talking about 6.6, the not too distant future. I mean, can you give us a call longer term? I mean, do you have a six-month, 12-month call? Well, it, it's there about 6.6 .6 for the time being. I think for us, okay. what is important also to recognize who is going to be in the White House, um, obviously after the U.S. election. I think a lot of the changes would depend, be dependent on the development here. I think overall, if Biden wins, there's a bias and a risk that uh, that obviously we're quite conservative with, with the focus that we have at the moment. So uh, I think ongoing, um, I would say dollar weakness is a topic that's going to be with us uh, in 2021. And that's to some degree we also reflected in dollar CNY. Right. Uh, Dominique, but broadening out, the Biden trade seems to have benefited a lot of emerging market currencies. And so do you think that uh, that could be a bit of a risky proposition if, let's say, we get an election surprise or a contested vote? Uh, and so how are you preparing for that volatility, if at all? Well, it's true that we that the Biden victory has been partially or at least to some degree being factored in. And I think if we would get uh, Trump winning it, or at least if we have a situation where the Senate stays obviously with the Republicans, and I think some of the, the some of the exchange rates that have been moving uh, in favor of some of the emerging market currencies could do a little bit of an unwind. But I think that's not the main story. For me, it's still there's a broad recovery taking place in next year. Uh, with the vaccine solution, and that gives an, uh, quite strong support for emerging market currencies. Uh, I think that mm -hmm. element remains in place, and that's why I would still focus on currencies like the, the IDR, INR, for example, uh, which obviously mm -hmm. both economies have been struggling with the virus, and once you have a vaccine mm -hmm. solution, you're going to see here, uh, I think, a lot of confidence building up. I think particularly Asia has shown a lot of resilience because we dealt with the situation probably a little bit better than uh, colleagues in, in uh, I would say, in Europe and, and the U.S. And so I think that should be rewarded um, regardless if, if now potential Trump is in place.